All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome aboard the final rites uh, one more time uh, as we, <laughs> excuse me, progress into our second proper session, whole crew assembly. Uh, name's Jason Catrone. I'm your DM for the evening, and so happy and uh, pleased to, to be here. Uh, at Just Jason, please, on Twitter. You can probably find me somewhere, either uh, in chat or on the screen. And uh, yeah, no, it's a lovely time that we are going to be uh, having here today with a couple of lovely people. Uh, guess they should go ahead and introduce themselves, starting with the one I immediately, immediately see, Blair, Heavenly. Hello, it's me, Heavenly. Tis underscore aliens on Twitter. Um, how is everyone doing today? I can't see the chat, so I assume everyone's fine. Yep, there's a party. <laughs> everyone's responding. I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. I am playing Nowhere, um, a rogue tiefling who uh, was not part of the fight last session because oh she doesn't fight. Um, and her outfit today will be described later, so don't worry. Of course. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to the outfit, okay? Don't worry. Yes, it's sleuthing outfit will certainly come handy. <laughs> All right, can't wait to hear it. Um, beyond that, however, we have another, which I now see. Angela, go ahead and say hi. Tell the people what you do, who you play. Uh, hello, um, I am Angela. I am also wearing stripes today. And I am playing Jovi, a tiefling mixologist on board the ship. Uh, mixologist is a homebrew that we're just sort of playing with as we go. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how it continues to work out. Um, you can find me at darling underscore gypsum on Twitter. I post a lot about random D&D &D stuff and fun things I like to think. And you can find me on uh, nerdsmith.org uh, on a bunch of shows, including tomorrow or tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific for Shenanigans, and tomorrow at noon Pacific for Discover RPG for some fun chat stuff, more shenanigans, I guess, uh, with our guest Chad from Chaotic Goodness here on the network. Uh, hey. We're going to be talking about preparation. As it mm -hmm. as it relates to gaming, a very very worthwhile topic that I am sure will generate much interesting discussion. Uh, can't wait for that tomorrow at uh, what was it twelve p.m. noon PST. Noon PST. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, before we can head on to uh, bigger and brighter things, I suppose we've got one more in the party that we need to introduce, Rachel. Our lovely artist extraordinaire who did the lovely portraits, as you can see on the screen. And player within this evening's campaign. How you doing? Where can we I'm find you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, I am um, playing Mercy, the tiefling, what a shock, uh, monk. And you can find me um, on at Talonir on Twitter is my handle. Um, and... A bit of artwork for the Lost Girls Vampire campaign, which has been a lot of fun. Um, you can also find me on Mondays uh, on the Blood on the Thames um, Twitch channel as well, where we play Vampire the Masquerade, so that's good fun. But today is all about D&D &D 5e and Tiefling Madness, and it's going to be great fun. Yes, it will be. Yes, it will be. Well, uh... As was so lovingly hinted by everyone in the party, this is an all tiefling cast, and on board the final rides, a lovely little uh, <laughs> semi cruise ship, sort of river barge. It's a it's a lovely little place where demons and devils and all sorts of nefarious fellows can hang out and have a good time. You said uh, lovely little place, and I just started singing "Love Shack" in my head. <laughs> That that you know that that's our well. anthem. Anytime the final ride stocks up to a board, that's the song that we play. That's just on a constant rotation in Jovi's room. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that'll work. Um, so before we have, hop into the game proper, there are a couple of sponsors that we would love to pay some homage to, uh, considering their lovely work and their lovely products. In case in point, we have the sponsor of Die Hard Dice. Yes. A uh, lovely purveyor of all things um, rollable and uh, 
purchasable online. It's a it's a good shop. Uh, All if you... things rollable, you can get yeah. wheels and uh, yeah. I I ran out of round things in my head just now. Rolls <laughs> that was uh, unfortunate. Yeah, rubber balls and actual rolls, like dinner rolls, like you can buy. Yeah. They'll be stale by the time that you actually get them in the mail. They don't sell dinner. But you can write some numbers on them and use it as like a D2. They don't, they don't sell dinner. Don't don't go to the website expecting dinner rolls. Go to their website expecting lovely, lovely handcrafted uh, metal dice and, and uh, in a variety of colors and, and textures and styles. It's, it's so pretty. So... Uh, if the uh, link is already not in chat, just go ahead and it's, what is it, dieharddice.com, I believe. Is it? Yes, yes. Uh, check out all their lovely, lovely accoutrements. Uh, in addition to Die Hard Dice, uh, we have another lovely sponsor by the name of World Anvil, which is another uh, interesting world building site that um, basically acts as a creator's best friend when it comes to maintaining information about a world, be it in a campaign, be it in an author's um, sort of novel series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We actually, uh, m meaning we here assembled, are uh, in the process of building a World Anvil page for final rights. Yes, for the boat specifically, so that uh, viewers can have a little bit more information about the history of the rights, perhaps uh, some more uh, insight into the traditions or uh, layout of the rights itself, its crew, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm saying that a lot, aren't I? Oh, no, no. Etc.? I mean, that's what it's for. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, that link will be in chat uh, pretty soon, and you can view it. Uh, no worries, no nothing. Uh, if you actually want to follow uh, the updates of that page specifically, you can do so by creating a World Anvil account. It's easy to do, uh, wonderful. It's a uh, free service to try, but believe me, with the amount of uh, features that they offer and the amount of work and love that is put into the uh, program itself, you're going to want to pledge support to them pretty quickly uh, because, excuse me, um, their uh, their base uh, level of support is like a, less than a gallon, or is about less the price of a gallon of gas in California. So it's, I like because we were trying real hard to come up with a good metaphor. Yeah, we were, or analogy there was a good this. metaphor at once, but there's a guild <laughs> membership level that's about five bucks a month. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and check that out if you want to get the full array of uh, services provided by World Anvil. Just five bucks a month, uh, free to try, and yeah, just find out more about this. Uh, Brilliant sponsor that's been so uh, wonderful and friendly, not only to the show, but to the Nerdsmith Network itself. And hey, if you happen to follow them on Twitter or anything, go ahead and give them a shout for us and, you know, tell us, uh, tell them from us uh, how much they rock. All right. I can't think of anything specifically, but I'll go ahead and throw it to Angela because I believe there's just one more little plug that we can do for one of the shows on this network that's, uh, yeah, deserving of support. More than deserving of support, in my opinion. So go ahead and just uh, throw it on out there. Why not? Awesome. So uh, every week or every session or so, we're going to try to make sure that you guys know about other shows on the network uh, so that you can find something else to become obsessed with. And uh, our promotion for this week is we'd like to talk a little bit about a little podcast called W-A-N-D uh, Radio. Uh, it spells out wand, but it's W-A-N-D Radio. It is a fictional advice show starring three DJs at a college radio station for a um, university for the, uh, actually it's the High Academy for the Celestial and the Occult, or Thaco University, if uh, any old school D&D folks out there. Uh, so it's a fictional advice show where the uh, radio DJs Calliope, Emmett, and Rupert take listener questions, keep you up to date on the latest news and goings on around campus, uh, try magical items that are sent to them, and generally just act like fools. Uh, it is a wonderful show. Uh, starring uh, our wonderful producer, Logan, who is behind the scenes right now, uh, as well as uh, Tessa and Kyle, who are both players in Shenanigans tonight, uh, as well as players on Countless Heroes. Um, so you can 
find them at nerdsmith.org on our content page. You can go check out one, uh, WAND Radio, and you can also send them your questions at their Twitter page, um, at wand underscore radio. Um, they will, they read user questions all the time and then try to give you their very best advice. Uh, the efficacy or safety of that advice, the quality varies, but <laughs> it is definitely worth checking out. If you like people goofing off in fantasy worlds, uh, WAND radio, highly recommend it. Uh, so go check them out at nerdsmith.org today, maybe after the stream. Yeah, just stick around today. And, uh, you know, uh, we're so glad to have you here. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. We're live on uh, alternating Tuesdays uh, on a bi weekly basis throughout the year. And um, we're, excuse me, so happy to have your eyes on the screen. So I suppose without further ado, it might do us good to welcome everybody aboard. All right. Lovely intro that was created by uh, Angela. So happy to have that uh, in your eye sockets at the present moment. But why are the why are the eye so sockets touching the screen and we're putting things inside them? This all feels very visceral and uncomfortable. Welcome to the final rites. <laughs> visceral and uncomfortable. That's our new tagline. Visceral. Yeah, visceral. And that's not that's not our new tagline. When last we left off, <laughs> jeez, um, the party assembled under a, a menagerie of disparate circumstances, uh, nowhere the keeper of the ledger, basically the records keeper of the rights, uh, was contacted by the first lieutenant, a uh, tiefling by the name of Revelry who described to her an incident which occurred during uh, his shift. Unfortunately, it seemed that two individuals were able to uh, abscond from the final rites, uh, teleporting by means of their own successfully. This is a disconcerting matter to say the least, and more information needed to be gathered. Nowhere subsequently met with Bahazet, the keeper of the hull, basically the bosun of Final Rites, a dragonborn swaggering bastard of eminent proportion and confidence. At a near similar uh, or very close to simultaneous time, Jovi and her mentor slash mixologist instructor slash uh, just a whole bunch insert of things. Insert other adjectives? <laughs> insert a hell of a lot of other titles and adjectives. Uh, a man by the name of Hamish, if memory serves, yep. um, met with the representative of the final rights, a member of the concierge crew by the name of Raphael Fife, a sort of pudgier, uh, less, uh, shall we say, battle-hardened gentleman, who was more than willing to capitulate to some of the 
admittedly small demands that Hamish had impressed upon, um, excuse me, uh, the, the representative. At the same time, Mercy, having recovered from the night before with the help of a friend by the name of Liability, Yes, that's that's his actual name. He's a disaster. Um, Billy! <laughs> um, was able to, excuse me, uh, recover quite swiftly and was unfortunately roped into the conversation had between Nowhere and Bahazet quite uh, expediently. After it was determined that uh, Avalok and Sireil, the two individuals in question, uh, had departed uh, properly from a teleportation rule or rune or portal that they generated, uh, it was decided that Mercy, under the auspices of nowhere, on the orders of Bahazet, would assist in preliminary investigations into the reasons as to why the defenses aboard the final rights did not actually stop the departure in any substantive manner. And Jovi has decided to tag along merely out of a sense of curiosity. Curiosity and self-preservation, maybe a mix of yeah, the two? It's a mix of the two, maybe wanting he has personal to personal reasons for being invested in this. Yes, indeed. <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, three of you now sit in the gambling den. Uh, it is still the morning. The the uh, majority of the ship is dead to the world, uh, much like the uh, river that you traipse along the River Styx, which you feel the ebb and flow of as the uh, chandeliers above and the creaking of the wood continues to sway as you are on this very, very dismal plane. Uh, as I said in the last session, there was really only one or two presences that were uh, in this room at any one time. Uh, one returns uh, in in terms of the uh, incubi who had sort of been company to Bahazet uh, and went off. Uh, it seems that this one has gotten the short straw of guarding the gambling den when no one's there. And um, a Triton uh, individual of indeterminate, uh, excuse me, uh, of indeterminate personage or, or presence. Like, the, the, the look that they have about them is very vacant. And so the three of you sit and scheme upon what might need to be done. I believe the last thing that was said was Jovi sort of amusingly saying that uh, this was going to be a disaster. <laughs> yeah. And the weight of those words kind of rings out as <laughs> this silence pervades for a time. There is only one solid lead that the three of you do know. Uh, well, go ahead and make an intel. Everyone? <laughs> Always a bad one to make. Fourteen. So fourteen from Mercy. A good show. Uh, jo not, jo not Jovi? A, not a fourteen. Um, oh, no, 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 it's an exactly a fourteen. Hooray! No, wait, no. Oh, no, wait, exactly no, a fourteen. No, that's my that's my score, not my modifier. The answer is a four. <laughs> Oh, a four. Good. Nice That's a four. number. That's half of 14. If you think. He's really good at golf, you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So where is nowhere on the 19. scale of Jovi to Mercy? Oh, above Mercy. Gotcha. <laughs> so um, Jovi being uh, a little bit more concerned with the concierge crew, it's not really your... <laughs> place to know these people it's just one of those things that you know 
probably people talk about and, and and you know you've heard a couple of people mention the name Eamon to you but you don't know if it's that Eamon or this other Eamon that you met one time and he was kind of cute and then your mind kind of spirals out of control start from there start, start like glancing over at the Triton <laughs> yeah it's, it's really just not all there uh, for a good long while as Mercy and Nowhere both of you recognize exactly who Eamon Gallo Dodger is uh, Mercy, actually, you recognize um, his description, or at least his name, uh, from Bailey, the uh, orc, the keeper of the armaments, the orc who, or half orc, who you actually um, got your weaponry from. Uh, it's it's a little uh, callback, uh, you know, to the way distant past of two weeks ago. Nowhere, specifically, you being most attuned with the other keepers know that Eamon is responsible not only for the engines, as his, uh, excuse me, title would imply, but a number of other more, shall we say, defensive capabilities that are aboard the rights. He's in charge of basically magical interference and uh, ensuring that the proper engines uh, that keep at bay souls within the sticks and keep aboard people on the rights are maintained properly and uh, running at peak efficiency. Being an artificer, he's eminently talented at his work, even though he only became a keeper from what you could define a short time before your arrival. So, with that in mind, if something's going wrong and people are able to leave the ship however they want, whenever they want, that's his problem to solve. And if he's not, then that's... Given that you are uh, eminently uh, attuned to the goings-on of the ship, that falls under your domain. Yes, and uh, even though it was uh, it, is, it was a little while ago, proximity just generally or happened twice at all seems to indicate there might be something a little bit screwy going on. Uh, or wait a minute, this isn't this is an eighteen plus show. Some fucky's going down, and it's just not that like it's not that reasonable as to why. At least not immediately. Well, it seems that our first stop should be to check in with Ament, Keeper of the Engines. Mercy, I'm sure you're familiar with him. You two were acquainted some time ago. Yes, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, I mean, I don't know them very well. Um, you seem to command the most respect when it comes to conversation around the crew, so I'd be happy to let you lead the conversation, but even so, I mean, I'm yeah, sure, we can go down there, I'm not sure what help I can be, but yeah. As soon as <laughs> you say you command the most respect, my, like, tight-lipped kind of neutral face just definitely, like, Grinch smiles for a second and then quickly returns to normal. I'm very happy to hear you say that, but I won't let you know that. <laughs> so just for the brief instance of like that, that, that horrifying, like, like that ridiculously like super like curly lipped smile, like. Yeah. Like it, it just, yeah, it, 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 it flashes upon your face for about a moment <laughs> indicating your supreme happiness question mark. I like I like being told that I command respect. So, Supreme leader yes. nowhere. Ah, her her weakness is brown nosing. <laughs> I understand now. Ah, it it all makes sense. It all makes sense suddenly. All right. Well, brown nosing aside, three of you have a bit of a job to do. Uh, 
which you sort of get the hint might be pressing considering the incubus who was sent back from the original cadre that accompanied Bazet is looking at you quite strangely as you sort of sit and contemplate your next move. Oh yeah, Mer Mercy is impatient as heck. She's probably already like waiting by the door, like anxiously tapping her foot. It's like a nervous twitch. It's like, oh, are we going? Like, are we doing this now? Yeah, I guess. I guess. Joby, doing... you coming out from behind the bar? I don't think I've ever seen you come like stand more than six feet away from that thing. There's a first time for everything, dear. Uh, Jovi will um, pack up her stuff she previously had her um, her drink accoutrement all spread out on the table and uh, she will cast a very um, I have to not use the word jovial it feels a little too on the nose <laughs> but um, I mean, she, she I will cast a very that. pleasant eye at the triton at the other table and sort of like uh, offer a little wave and a wink and uh, make note of them for a friendly conversation at a later time. Uh, the Triton kind of takes a look at you and uh, sort of seeing uh, her features uh, fully formed. Uh, the nose itself seems to uh, slope sort of elegantly into the face. Like you get a real Abe Sapien kind of vibe. Uh, uh, from the general sort of face, sa sh face shape and um, <laughs> Jesus and um, uh, skin texture that sort of semi scaly yet fleshy tone uh, although the brilliant uh, sort of pinks and blues that uh, intermingle uh, and layer across the face uh quite in quite brilliantly in several patterns definitely betray the fact that this is a triton and uh they are far from familiar territory but she nevertheless sort of like blinks a couple of times with eyes that are pitch black uh pupilless uh, from this vantage point at least and she simply returns the wave with a webbed hand Jovi's not a shape of water. She's not deterred. That was... that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mercy, uh, since you kind of, like, came to the... Uh, there's a big spider on my window. Oh. I don't like you. Go away. <laughs> okay, so second second of nowhere's weakest <laughs> spider. Mmm, it's trying to get in. Ah! Um, Mercy, since you if I get killed, it's because this spider broke into my home and murdered me. Um <laughs> Of course. Of course. <laughs> use it. Oh no, use the spiders. For, use it <sighs> to fuel the sense of urgency that nowhere has. Ah! Um the, Mercy. Nowhere, are you, you right? You seem like, panicking. <laughs> since you kind of walked into the this like cafeteria like i don't even know where we are are you like dressed from your partying last night i mean how do you look um you i'm push? wearing my normal clothes which i also wore last night and i also wore while i was sleeping so so you're uh, looking super wrinkled yeah pretty wrinkled although like the kind of she's the fabrics are quite like thick they're, they're like all like got like patterns and prints so it's harder to tell but she looks certainly disheveled, but she always does, so. Well, if you always look like that, then I'm not going to say anything. You clearly know what your vibe is. <laughs> way, way to dunk on your co-workers. Shit. <laughs> Nowhere just nicks everybody. Oh, man. It's just how she interacts with people. Jovi, do, you, do yeah. you even know the way down to the, um, the, the Keeper of the Engines? Have you actually been down there? Where have you actually been? I've never really found out how much of the ship you kind of operate on. Oh, well, um, here, and, um, and she points down to the hallway where the crew, over there. Um, I go all over the place, dear. I, just because I don't have time to talk and have in-depth, personal, intimate conversations with every person doesn't mean I don't know a little bit about this ship. It is a home. Speaking of personal, in-depth conversations, I guess we should probably go speak to this guy. Or 
because it's probably gonna throw us off a boat. Mercy, I am so impressed with how. Ooh, I slipped into a southern accent there because I just heard Angela. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> it's, Jovi's, not, Jovi's enthusiasm is nothing but infectious. As well as her accent, it's a it's a mimetic sort of. Mercy, <laughs> I'm so impressed with how dedicated you are to finding out the particulars of this mystery we have in our hands. I agree. We should head down right away. I mean, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I bamfed in through the roof and landed on a poker table. Of course I want to bloody find out why. Agreed. Let's go! Uh, I gesture for Mercy to lead the way. I'm so, I'm so pleased that she's having a good time. <laughs> I power walk, like, monk speed <laughs> towards the Keeper of the Engines. <laughs> you explicitly power walk, like... Yes. Yeah, I can't keep up with you though because my skirt is really tight, so I'm just making very small, but like I'm trying really hard to keep pace. He's so just you like, just hear my heels, they're like click 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 click. You have like, heels? Of course every, I have heels. Every now and again she just kind of turns around and goes, Are you coming? Do you even Oh, never mind, come on. I would just like to point out that D has no rules that give you disadvantage for wearing heels, so that's right. up. Everybody can That's wear right. heels if I've learned anything from all of the action movies I've watched starring women, it's that wearing heels in combat is perfectly reasonable and a totally normal thing for all women to do. Yep. I mean, I have a nice, I have a nice sensible heel, though. It's not, it's like a boot. It's not a... Oh, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're coming in with the, the, the like, no platform shoes up in here, like just straight yeah, up like that. I, I I'm wearing flip flops. flops. <laughs> flip flops uh, definitely get disadvantaged. Well, they're more like those kind of flip flops. It's safe to expose your toes. Actually, no, they're more Minimum. like, you know those, you know those shoes which form around your toes? It's like that, yeah. except it's like only oh, in two sections. Nice. So uh, it's kind of like samurai shoes, if you like. Oh, them. okay, sure. I was gonna okay. say, so you're flip wearing flip flops. You get a are wearing flip flops with socks. <laughs> 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 come back, children. Come back. Sorry, we digressed Never. into footwear. <laughs> Never. So some sort of like ninja tabai situation. So glad that we could devote so much intense thought to this uh, to this consideration of footwear. Shoes. Shares. Um, <laughs> Mercy, since you're leading the pack, go ahead and roll a history check so you can sort of see if you've had it uh, drilled into your head where exactly Amon is within All right. the. 11. Yeah, that's number. It's not the. <laughs> best number you know that the engines are at the back so you figure if you head back as far as you can you'll probably hit Eamon's office uh actually going the route that you uh are currently as you see the the sort of dark wooded um uh the dark wooded uh interior of the final rites uh surrounding you with this soft sort of soul light that flickers you do pass by the forge where you actually hear Bailey sort of banging away at some such contraption or weapon. Uh, perhaps it's reforging, perhaps it's forging a new weapon. Uh, she's a busy woman, so uh, the door being closed and sort of the ever present sense of like, <laughs> leave me alone, I'm busy. Uh, emanates from this space as you pass by. Just continue making my way down the, the length of the boat. Just, just gonna follow the smell of sulfur and we'll, we'll find it. It's how I usually find my way around. <laughs> Absolutely. Snaking your way back even further, it takes you to the uh, general engine compartment after you go down a level act uh, actually descending a, a quite sparse flight of stairs that um, brings you down to uh, the level of um, 
Eamon and his sort of uh, cadre, you see uh, this level is a little bit more lively than the top levels. Um, you actually witness a few like shifts uh, still in transition from team, uh, well, given the time of day, I believe it would be from team one to team two, uh, where the early morning crew, uh, those in charge of the red eyes, basically go off and uh, give the proper morning crew their responsibilities and uh, such for the day. The staff of the Final Rites, uh, you all know, just common knowledge, is mainly those of devilish heritage, be it uh, tieflings, be it incubi, or, or other such entities uh, of a sort of lower power level that, um, that find themselves conscripted aboard the Rites for one reason or another, perhaps under circumstances similar to yourselves, uh, minus you, Mercy, you're a fairly unique case. Um, you actually see a couple of imps that are uh, currently ratcheting uh, a few pipes that are not cooperating, and uh, you hear just very rough talk uh, in Infernal permeating this space. Uh, the members of uh, the... Uh, crew under the command of Bahazet, uh, the guards and such are sort of keeping ever vigilant watch. And as you know where, uh, crest down from the stairwell, uh, they actually look a little taken aback, but um, nevertheless sort of uh, seem to straighten out themselves a little bit more uh, stringently. Uh, one of them actually carries a javelin of some sort uh, that was previously resting on her shoulder, but is now straight at attention as you make your way into the space. Mercy, based on your intelligence check or your history check, um, you're, you know that Eamon is within the general area. He's a busy bee, so he could be anywhere. Um, I just walk straight up to the nearest uh person working here probably one of the people maybe one of the people with the spears who just stood to attention to us so a little bit of a power trip right now um yeah hey do you know where Eamon is we have uh, a very important meeting with him straight from the top it's kind of a big deal make make a persuasion check hold on as I just find it Fifteen. Uh, I'm assuming this is a, a official keeper business, says the woman who was holding the javelin earlier. I gesture to nowhere and go, well, why else would the keeper be here? If it wasn't official keeper business, honestly, we come here as her official accoutrement to this little meeting and you're asking me if this is keeper business. Who, what's the name of the person that Mercy's talking to? Make a history check. Make a history <laughs> check to know who they're talking to? Uh, well, oh, you know, you know who they're, I, I thought you were talking like specifics. No, uh, this is the same woman that stood at attention uh, when you walked in uh, to the- What's her uh, name? To the space. Um, yeah, that, that'll be easy enough. Uh, your, her name would, is um, to your current recollection, uh, serenity. Serenity. Honestly, Serenity, I appreciate that you are trying to be studious with your questions, but what a foolish question to ask when I'm standing right here. That's what I said. Uh, n no offense meant, Keeper. I just... Uh, a a Eamon's been on a little bit of a knife's edge, and uh, I just... I just wanted to make double sure. I will be sure to tell him that you hassled me as I came in. I'm sure that will help him feel at ease that you are protecting his time. Mercy, please go on ahead. I'll follow. Well, hold on. They haven't actually told me where he is yet. Oh. Where, where is he? Uh, Nowhere. <laughs> pupil, my pupils like dilate and I zone in on serenity. Where is Eamon? 
And his, he just returned to his office. He was talking with Yorhala about something. Uh, can Yorhala? Uh, uh, this is uh, Lieutenant uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, Kersa. She, she, you see a bead of sweat kind of come down uh, Serenity's head as as she is <laughs> perturbed by this line of questioning. Like it, it, it's sort of like seeing your like upper management come down to your level and like immediately start harassing you. So it's it's very uncomfortable. That is what upper management does. It's in the upper management handbook. Page one, always be harassing. Always, I just kind always, of, always. I just kind of lean in to Serenity and be like, look, I don't want to make your life any more difficult than it already is. Can you remind me which way it is to Eamon's office? Because I don't want to take shit from nowhere either. As you see, d just this sort of shell of shambles of a woman kind of like perk up again, trying to keep a stiff upper lip. <sighs> she breathes kind of uh, heavily and looking to you, Mercy, um, a flash kind of emanates from her temple like very quickly and latches onto yours as you receive a message. Seven doors down to the right. Can't miss it. It's probably going to be locked. Here. Oh, that's okay. Thank you very much. And then I immediately take off in that direction. On your motorcycle. Whoa, on your motorcycle. <laughs> on your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what. That's just what Mercy sounds like when she power <laughs> when she really gets that's going. That's when I when I never <laughs> to run. That's the sound. Yeah, it, it's a bit of foley work, a uh, coincidental foley work, as uh, you see the two um, imps finally complete ratcheting the pipe. There's an immediate burst of power that reverberates as Mercy bolts. <laughs> I didn't know she was the Flash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Joby just sort of casually starts following, but... Um, reaches into her bag and offers Serenity a very simple little um, shot glass bottle. It looks like a little hotel bottle of uh, something high proof and, and, and brown in color. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Also, I want to know if I see this. Make happening. a perception check. Okay. I or actually, really... no. What's your passive perception? Who's pa oh, hers. Probably high. Yeah. What what is nowhere's power? Where is it on D and D beyond? Uh should be Oh, uh twelve. Um well there's perception, investigation, and insight. I didn't even realize there were so many different passive traits. Anything can be passive if you take a ten and add the modifier. <laughs> yeah, it's twelve. Okay, so twelve is your passive Yeah. Go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check for me. Oh, thank God. Okay. Sleight of hand. Dude, how, how's that? 14. Okay, that's above uh, That's above the passive perception. But what was the per passive investigation is 19. <laughs> which She's constantly investigating everyone. Which will... I'm always, I'm always. That's the second page in the manual. Always be investigating. Always, always be, be harassing. Sounds like. Always sounds be investigating. Like being... Always be lurking. That's that's nowhere's catchphrase. She has that tattooed on her arm. Always be lurking. <laughs> uh, my persuasion with the eye emoji. My persuasion was an abysmal nine. Okay. The labels rubbed off on the bottle that she offers. It looks super sketch, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but as you hand it off and, and nowhere does not notice it because this was perception. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unfortunately, given like the close proximity of you to um, <laughs> nowhere, uh, Serenity immediately assumes that this is a test, Aww. and so does not pocket the alcohol, and instead, like, finds a receptacle to just throw it in the trash. Like, immediately. <laughs> I, was, I was bottom 
bottom shelf anyway, all right. There's just an intense blush that sort of creeps across her um, her purple skin. It's just it's it's just not not good, and she sort of goes off in a bit of a flustered huff. Stop by the bar sometime. I owe you a drink. Off hours. Message not received. <laughs> or probably like. What's what's the thing the kids do? This message scene. scene, yeah, message scene <laughs> at like five thirty four or whatever. Like, <laughs> go down seven doors later, Mercy. You are at the door of uh, Amon Gallo Dodger, um, and indeed, it does seem like there is a bit of a chill to the air, uh, at least in a, a sort of social circumstance. Uh, the workers that are there. Um, are mainly clerical. You notice like a couple of imps carrying stacks of paper and, and what you assume to be like important documents. Uh, they actually seem to uh, leave the documents in what seems to be a bit of a chute that they uh, press into uh, the wall and then immediately like scurry off. They are fretful little creatures. Nowhere, Jovi, you catch up uh, pretty soon and are able to kind of note the general surroundings. Just before Nowhere arrives, I knock on the door really loudly and then step back so I'm standing behind Nowhere and kind of give a nice, courteous kind of, after you, my lady. Well, Eamon would know that I never knock that loudly, so I'm not worried. <laughs> I just like to stand at doors and wait until they feel my presence. And I give a very small knock, like... Then I count. And then note for later. Yeah. <laughs> Took 37 uh, seconds to answer door. <laughs> uh, after the first knock, you hear sort of like a grunt that doesn't really register like acknowledgement or uh, invite you to come in. At the second knock, knock, which is a little bit lighter, there's a pause for about two or three seconds before... Damn it, that better be nowhere or I'm gonna shoot blood from my eyes. You hear oh, muffled so behind you so hear uh, muffled behind the door. It is indeed nowhere, and I have company, so please keep your blood in your eye sockets. <laughs> you hear a bunch of grumbling uh, as you hear the pitter patter of uh, footsteps before the door latch opens and reveals to you Eamon Gallo Dodger, gnome artificer of the final rites. He has jet black hair, uh, a sort of interesting face. It's kind of uh, hard to describe uh, given that the DM has not yet opened the face claim uh, associated with that character. <laughs> Bear with Which you can find on Final Rights World Anvil page. That's worldanvil.com slash w slash final dash rights. Put it in the chat because that's too much. Indeed, to indeed. Uh, sort of seeing his, uh, excuse me, uh, dark uh, tan skin, uh, very obviously um, youthful in appearance, but also like aged with experience uh the boyish features kind of roughened into more traditionally manly characteristics uh, as he looks up he, he kind of gruffly uh clears his throat the sort of black scraggles of his beard uh being fairly unkempt uh giving appearance to Eamon as a little bit more Shall we say disheveled than normal? He blinks a few times and just, um, excuse me, waves his head back in. Um, the sort of tightly knotted curls of his hair, uh, somewhat bouncing. He's let it grow out uh, to uh, a wilder degree than what you uh, nowhere specifically are used to. But nevertheless, uh, he makes his way in and um, quickly tries to organize his space 
as the three of you actually walk in, there are a few magical instruments, uh, literally like instruments for the study and manufacture of magic, not like enchanted cellos or whatever. Um, uh, there are a few textbooks, a few scrolls, a few, uh, a few metallurgic sort of uh, substances that are boiling. It's a mad scientist's uh, worst nightmare, but um, as he invites you in, he sort of looks back and, and uh, who's the final one to enter the space? Uh, he looks to you and, and like motions for you to close the door behind uh, you. Sure, she'll do so. Uh, as you sort of close the door, you notice um, the uh, papers that had been sort of slammed into the wall. Uh, very uh, abruptly sort of fall into a heap at the door. Uh, it's a not very organized system, but Eamon seems to be managing well, although actually everybody make an insight check. Insight, you say? In insight, 18. I say. 16. 18, 16, and nowhere. What'd you get? 12. Not, not a people person. Um, Nowhere, you're not really concerning. Um, I have a plus eight in insight. I just rolled very low. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Fine. I can't. Uh. <laughs> so, um, you're not really concerned with what his emotional state or what the state of his workplace is. This is a, a little bit of a, a mission that needs to be fulfilled or carried out. Mercy, Jovi. You get the sense that he's not always like this. Um, not that he's not always disheveled. Lord knows, with a chaotic workspace such as this, there has to be a little bit of little bit of eccentricity within uh, your character. Uh, but um, you get the sense that there's a similar sort of urgency that um, is inherent in his uh excuse me in his uh bodily language and, and whatnot that maybe is associated with uh current events shall we say mm. uh jovi does take a moment to step forward and offer um Eamon, a, a very genteel hand. I don't believe we've met yet, dear. Um, I'm Jovi. He, he looks at the hand for a moment and then... Oh, right, shake it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. He, he, uh, <laughs> he reaches out and like vigorously shakes your hand. Uh, you note that there's a lot of uh, grime or like dust particles beneath his fingernails. He's not looking too hot. He's very involved with his work, as you can imagine. Um, I will the, be the judge of that, Jason. You, eh, eh, fine. Jeez. So combative. <laughs> uh, um, I just meant the not looking too hot thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it was competitive on that. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, but no, she'll... She She'll shake back. She's very amused by... I'm sorry if we're interrupting. Uh, you seem a little preoccupied right now. <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the general workspace or was it... Well, it's probably the general workspace, wasn't it? Yeah, I got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, a, a pickle on my hand. It's not, nothing too terrible and, and nothing that I can't solve. He quickly uh, speaks around you and uh, addresses nowhere directly. Just so that... I thought we had had a conversation about making sure that your workplace is always clean and tidy. You know, you would probably have less stress accumulating if you took care of the space that you spend so much of your time in. But 
This is tidy. What, what are you talking about? And he blinks a couple of times. Mm. You you hear like a small Bunsen burner esque sort of uh, machine kind of continue to rise in temperature. At which point, Eamon scurries around you, Jovi, and goes to turn it down as quickly as possible. Do you need any help, dear? No, no, perfectly fine. All under control. Well, not really under control. There's a little bit of a, a, a thing that I'm trying trying to parse. It's it's nothing too terrible. And I mean, unfortunately, there was a little bit of a second incident uh, pertaining to, well, similar in nature to. Why are you here? And he, he immediately seems to register mercy that you are in the room as well. Just kind of have been looking around, interested in everything. And when he says that, I just kind of gesture to nowhere. I'm like. Wow, this one's in charge, so. Well, yeah, Amen, I certainly hope so. To cut to the chase, I'm not sure if you were made aware of. I keep slipping into this. Always, always. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. It's because whenever I do a southern accent, I always do it really high like that. And so yeah. my brain is like, hi, voice southern. <clears throat> Eamon, I'm not sure if you were made aware of the curious events that transpired aboard the ship last night. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I was uh, made eminently aware. Uh, your holla came in a little bit, a uh, little bit a while ago. Uh, secondhand story. It was uh, related to uh, a current and, and uh, unfortunate uh, occurrence that has uh, cropped up. That I'm, <laughs> believe me, all under control, perfectly fine. Nothing's going to happen, probably. Uh, just got to hope that nobody else attempts the teleportation onto or off of the ship. That, hey, just... I, I, I didn't attempt anything. It was 100% some kind of accident of some kind of weird uh, hoodoo guy who sent me here in the first place. Don't don't go, you know, pointing fingers too readily. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm not about pointing fingers at you, but it was somebody who done sent you here, yeah? I mean, that's just the, the, the facts of the situation. It, it, it's just not anything that, that happens spontaneously. And even if it does happen spontaneously, we're supposed to be protected against it. I mean, that's the whole thing with the rights. People come aboard, we keep track of who's on a board, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and then we let them off at some other place. Amen, if I may, you've said many things that worry me which I'm sure you can guess is why we are here. You assure us that it will probably not ever happen again, and then that if it does happen, we should be able to stop it. But twice now, we have been unable to stop it, which makes it very difficult for me as the keeper you just mentioned of the final rites passage crew, ship, and manifest for me to keep track of what's going on so you can see, Eamon, why I might be a little frustrated that has this happened not only once when it should never happen at all, but twice. Eamon, do you see what I mean? Make an intimidation check. <laughs> Proficiency in bitch. Yeah, I want to use my um, bitch reroll if I don't do very good on this. <laughs> we'll say with advantage because of your status aboard the ship. Okay, with advantage, that's a uh, nine. I don't like this app that I have. I'm downloading a new app. Do you hear me? <laughs> I'm deleting you and I'm downloading a new app. You've displeased me. Do you, do you hear me, tech gods? That's a nine with reroll. A but nine total? Hold on. Maybe I have something. I don't. I only, uh, oh, no. Never mind. I can sneak attack him if I want. <laughs> don't, I, I politely ask that you don't. <laughs> As you sort of like assert yourself, Eamon kind of like tries to interject at certain points, but eventually kind of shrinks down a little bit. As you tower over him a good like two or three feet, he's, he kind of <clears throat> clears his throat. I, 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 I certainly understand your trepidation and concern. I speak merely in esoteric or uh, conditional terms. 
as the solution is probable, but unclear until implemented. I've narrowed the source of the problem to, shall we say, a defective crystalline uh, substance that's, shall we say, clung to one of the Okay, he, he sort of deflates and then steadies himself. So, so How, what? You want us to get more of that crystal stuff you're talking about? No, 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 it's, it's an... Okay, how dumb should I make this for, for all of you? He, he stops Pretty and, dumb. like, asks points blank. Pretty dumb, please. How dumb does he have to make it? All right. Uh, he... he quickly goes to one of the, his tables and uh, with a pair of miniature tongs, grabs what looks to be a shard or a crystalline sort of um, mineral. Go ahead, everybody, and make an arcana check. Five. Sixteen. Nine. So, All right. Yeah. So... Five, sixteen, and nine? And Mercy was the one that rolled sixteen, huh? No, I rolled sixteen. No, I was the oh. five. Oh, no, sorry. I, I, I missed that. So, uh, Jovi, with your familiarity in Arcana, because, duh, um, you actually recognize the um, semi-importance or concern that uh, Eamon shows. Uh, you don't it, it goes by many names. Uh, you know it as the festering. Um, it's a sort of crystalline structure that occurs when a particular magical element, usually of a crystalline nature, um, has a misalignment within its internal structures or is cracked or damaged in some capacity. And from that crack or from that misalignment, there comes this, which is, uh, as you know it, called the festering. It's a infectious little bugger that drains the uh, inherent magics of whatever it is attached to. This can be uh, constructs. This can be, uh, uh, excuse me, um, magical items, this could be anything really, uh, but it is, again, most associated with, like, crystals of uh, a similar sort of uh, arcane nature. Um, now, as Eamon shows this, he, he, you notice him kind of holding it away from himself. Um, <clears throat> As an artificer being adept in weaving magics, you get the sense that even he is a little bit uh, worried or at least well-versed in the dangers of such a substance. But uh, to mercy and uh, nowhere. This just seems to be a pretty rock that he's showing you. Well, I mean, if it's defective and you don't want it, I'll have it. Uh, I, I can, I can say with certainty you would not want this. Uh, it goes by many, many names. I know it is the corruption. There are a couple of people that know it as festering. Yeah, th yeah, that's that's the term I would I would use. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Anywho, this little. Bastard here. Found growing on one of the motivating crystals for, surprise, surprise, one of our teleportation dampening engines of my own design. It's not exactly terrible. It's just that, well, I'm going to have to find another motivating crystal. Jovi, you know, um, or you reason uh, pretty well. Uh, if it's a teleportation dampening device for a ship of this size, 
the motivating crystal has to be substantial in either magic or in size, or perhaps even both. So if there's even like a hairline crack and this is, uh, this is currently growing, there's probably more than what he's showing you at the current moment. Uh, how how big would I have um, justified as being uh, big, like substantial sized? How how big are we talking? About um, at minimum, probably about ten foot by six foot. So big, okay. Big, yeah. Like small compact car size yeah 10 right. like if, if we're given it proper dimensions like three dimensional probably about 10 foot long six foot wide and three foot deep and it, it, it will have to be um incorporated into whatever engine he has devised um right. but that's for that's for him to figure out and sure. you to help with So you're thinking some sort of expedition looking for one of these crystal things? Exploring avenues at the minute. Um, gonna have to clear the fester in first. And he quietly places the tongs over a beaker before dropping down the crystal. It fizzles and pops and like contorts into black uh, dust in the acid solution that he has uh, come up with. Gonna have to clear that before too long, but I'd like to have a replacement ready just so I can create a temporary housing and and uh, hopefully prevent further, uh, shall we say, mishaps. He turns over to nowhere and gives like a snide smile. Jovi's face sours a little bit as she watches the dissolving happen. Um, Eamon, this this sort of festering, it, what the, what's the likelihood that, that it could be brought on n not just a natural sort of um, uh, uh, mutation or, or corrupting of the crystal, but like uh, sabotage? Could someone have done this? You think that's a possibility? That someone would have done this on purpose? I mean, this is like a boat filled with demons and devils who hate each other's guts, so maybe? And yes, well, hate is one thing, but purposeful sabotage, I mean, that's just uncivilized. And believe me. I just give her a look. <laughs> uh, anytime there's neutral ground established in a conflict, there's going to be people on either side that would rather it not exist. Well, I had not entertained that terrifying possibility until the present moment. You're but welcome. Even if it were a purposeful act, whoever perpetuated it would be on the sponsor's hit list. And believe me, that's not a list anybody wants to be on. Immediately, all of you make... Eleven. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Sorry, man. Damn. Oh, that makes sense. Mercy, you've yeah. <laughs> you've heard the term sponsors thrown around very sparingly, uh, in sort of like hushed conversations with Bahazet and uh, some other keepers. Uh, Jovi, people talk about the sponsors as this sort of other entity that has influence or exerts power over the rights. Um, Shadowy cabals and all that. Pretty much. Nowhere you are eminently familiar with the business of the sponsors. Although you have not actually met a single one of them. You see, the final rights is indeed a neutral ground, as was mentioned, and it's kept in line by individuals of immense power and influence, not only within the Hells, but within the Abyss. They are the ones that have, since the founding of the Final Rites, kept the, the paddle turning and kept the River Styx vacant enough for this place to operate. 
they are unknown, uh, anonymous, due to their uh, commiseration, uh, the sort of forging of an alliance between demon and devil is heavily frowned upon in both societies. But as you consider the possibility of sabotage, Eamon's words certainly ring true. If anybody purposefully took action against the rights, the sponsors would most likely get involved. At the very least, the captain would be called. And that's, to your mind, an even more terrifying possibility. Right, I was just going to say, but I wouldn't want the sponsors to get involved. That means that something's so out of control that it's like mom and dad have to intervene. Yep. So, so go to the principal's office. Yeah, so that terrifying possibility suddenly exists. And Eamon... Um, I'm going to kind of level my gaze at Jovi... Um, just like trying to gauge visually like how much she would know of the sponsors but if I'm not getting if she's not like giving me a code back with her eyes I'll just I'll just say I think until we know for sure this is something that we should keep between the four of us and then I'll turn to Eamon and say or the three of us well now no, hang on look I I've got a couple of possibilities. I'd love to go over with the, uh, with you on them. If you'd like to maybe... And he turns to Jovi, recognizing uh, your uh, arcane specialty. If you wouldn't mind making a few drinks. He gulps. Jovi, sure. is there something that you can help him with? Oh, I can help him with a drink. <laughs> so as, uh, <laughs> As we pan from the door and as we see another imp uh, slam a sheaf of papers onto uh, that immediately spills onto the floor. Uh, the assembled party now has a line of investigation to pursue as Eamon has informed them of a little bit of a defect that they might be able to help in remedying. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a breather. Everybody take a little bit of a break. Go ahead, get yourself some water, stretch, or go to the privy, whatever you need to do, and have a good time. We'll see you in just a moment. Uh, bye bye.
Hello, everyone. So happy to have you back. Hope you had a little bit of a good break and uh, hope that you're topping off on some liquid refreshment as one of our players is. <laughs> okay, it's not really the afternoon anymore here, so I feel yeah, like... Yeah, it's, it's close enough. It's fine. Five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> All right. Where last we left off, that's the word, He's where? phrase, <laughs> where, when, however we last, why, my head suddenly, oh. just, <laughs> and my head's not working too well. Anywho, when last we left off, uh, the party assembled just found themselves a uh, little bit of a lead in the mysterious reasons as to why persons have been able to perhaps teleport from and onto the final rites. Seemingly uninvited. Although, again, the case of Mercy is eminently unique and perplexing. Eamon Gallo Dodger, the Keeper of the Engines, has been uh, arraying out... Uh, a plethora of possibilities for finding or otherwise securing a uh, motivating crystal to replace the obvious uh, defect de or defected one that is currently housed aboard the rights. The plans that he has in place are not exactly... Concrete, you, uh, as he goes along, and we'll go ahead and slip right into it. The motivation, the motivation crystal itself has to be of sizable and um, immense capability. Um, Amen, kind of intones as he peruses over a few bits of correspondence that he's been able to write and uh, a few notes uh, scattered on various qualities of parchment. Uh, amid amidst them are equations and uh, other forms of, uh, again, very eccentrically uh, marked uh, pieces of vellum and parchment. He breathes a little bit of a sigh and stills himself. Right. In order to improve the stability of the guard itself, we're basically going to have to find this either, if we want to have this done immediately, either before we plane hop, in which case you all will have to go out there, and he kind of pauses for a moment considering, again, that terrifying possibility, There's a nearby cliff formation that I've hypothesized to perhaps contain a crystal of sizable enough power, although as there has been no uh, threat assessment either from Bahazet or uh, Bailey, you're going to be going in partially blind. Just depends okay. on how... I mean, yeah, I mean, we can handle that. We've been picked specially for this task to work together and complete this. What was it again? What was the thing we're looking for? Some kind of magic crystal? That's what I got from it. You know, if that's the only thing you got from it, that's that's good enough. That's, that's more than most people. Hey, it's... I know that looks like I can bring one back. It's good enough, trust me. He, he sort of sees the gawking look uh, that you give to Mercy nowhere. More importantly, um, what planet are we on right now? Uh, what can we... Like, what, what's out there? Where, where are we? He blinks a couple of times. Okay, so I guess that Bahazet didn't really Bahazet tell you, didn't huh? didn't tell me shit. Mercy, we're in the Palisades. Yep. And it's not looking too hot. Uh, 
at least at the minute. The planet that we're on is basically a dead husk. It's formally grandiose status. Definitely not communicated by the current... Uh, and kind of pauses, searching for the right words. Wouldn't Shit that make, storm that's brewing outside. Wouldn't that make it easier to find a glowing crystal? If yeah, it's a that's... Husk? Just saying... Yeah, that's kind of what my hypothesis was. Uh, go ahead and I went ahead and uh, onto some of the observation decks, and I hypothesized, given the history of the planet and whatnot, that there would be <laughs> gold in them. There hills. He kind of mumbles his way through that. But again, considering that we don't know exactly what's out there, it's a little bit of a gamble. Now, if we that's want fine. We'll be yeah. fine. We're just hopping out, getting a crystal and coming back. What could go wrong? A lot of things, believe me. Uh, there are a couple of other possibilities that I would be more than happy to entertain if you have the interest. He kind of blinks a few times. More interesting than getting off of this boat? Go on. Well, I don't know about that. I know myself a, a merchant fella. He's... Uh, Trustable type, um, or at least a uh, little bit of a uh, 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 non-psychopathic person. Guy by the name of Callum Reginald Dunstan Mercer. He's renowned throughout these parts, and uh, he'll be coming aboard the rights pretty soon, if I'm not mistaken. And he looks to you, uh, nowhere. Nowhere. Who do I know about what's his name? Dustin Mercer. Uh, Callum Reginald Dunstan Mercer. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, post that in chat. Um, go ahead and make a history check at advantage. Twenty-one. Oh, Callum. Yes. You're eminently familiar with Callum. He runs roughshod over a lot of regulations, rules, and just general sensibilities of decorum. He's not the worst person that you've dealt with, but he's definitely one of the skeeviest. He kind of... Uh, he kind of operates as an independent... Um, and shall we say enigmatic uh, character, uh, one who sort of goes into planes in order to uh, seek profitable ventures and then surreptitiously leave for reasons all his own. Um, he rarely goes out of his way to help people uh, unless it is some sort of uh, profit-driven uh, endeavor he'll be very reluctant to part with anything that's his. Of course it's Callum who would be of service in this trying time. And w when is he set to come aboard the final rights? Uh, during the next plane hop, which will be happening at day's end. I suppose that when he comes aboard, I could greet him and see if I can't finagle some sort of deal that suits him to get what we need. Although it pains me. Uh, I can uh, do I, it. I perfectly understand and I will be sure to speak with uh, Namine about perhaps remuneration not only for your pains but for uh, his cooperation in this matter. It'll that be would a... be wonderful, thank you. Though nothing, yeah, of course, yeah. can compensate the emotional and intellectual and... <sighs> Anyways, that's besides the point. Uh, yeah, I perfectly understand. Um, he kind of pauses at this uh, other possibility. There's another way. Um... Y'all know where we're headed next. Uh, 
go ahead and make intelligence checks. A lot of you, uh, you know where with advantage because, hey, you're part of the command crew. You got to know where you're going. Nine. Five. Popular number. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. Uh, Jovi, Mercy. You're not really being kept in the loop, which Mercy kind of feels like. I find out when we get there. Yeah, Mercy, it feels kind of like a slide against you, considering that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're part of the crew, so I mean, you know, like. Part of the ship, part of the crew. Yeah, it's that whole Davy Jones sort of thing. At least you think it is. You haven't really met the captain, so you can't ask. That's how magic ships are supposed to work. Exactly. That's and that's sort of the way that it is in all of the novels that you've read and, and all of the things that you've consumed. All of the media has informed you that this is how magic ships. All of that Faerunian pop culture. Yeah, exactly. And you cannot believe for the life of you, your mind goes on this tangent for like a good couple of minutes as nowhere you come up with the actual answer. Um, the plane of existence that you will be traversing Next up will be the elemental plane of fire. Yeah, it's hot and full of fire and not very pleasant. And, you know, fire. And that's where we're picking up Callum. Yeah, Callum's there for whatever reason. You're not entirely sure. His request to come aboard was lodged while you were actually traversing uh the remnants of the palisade uh, or the remnants of this planet within the palisade. So where are we? We are going next? to the elemental plane of fire, Mercy. I feel that all of this should be included in your daily briefings. Daily briefing? I barely have a monthly briefing and I've only been here like a month. Well, that is something that I will have to take up with Please your superior. Do. I yeah, um, more importantly, a mental plane of fire, there's got to be a lot of crystals there. We should totally just go out and find one. Why Why trade with some slimy, weaselly merchant for something we can just waltz out and get? Come on, it'll be great practice. We'll all get to see the outside world a little bit. What could be better? Uh, Mercy, one does not simply waltz into the elemental plane of fire. I understand that... <laughs> It's a fox we have a natural it. resistance to. Yeah, we're all flame touched. We're fine. Just didn't stay in one place for too long. Fine. That simple. <laughs> Jovi. We won't know till we try. Some have you have ever have been to the elemental plane of fire? I've been to one alternate elemental plane, and I was not yet enough of a person to remember it. I'd like to not repeat the experience. The elemental plane of booze does not count, Jovi. Oh, I never leave that, dear. You, I still I, say we should go. Think how, think how. Eamon, you were saying that there was an alternative to dealing with Callum in the elemental plane of fire before Mercy jumps from the deck the moment we land. Will you please just tell us what it is? Eamon is kind of like spellbound by your banter for a moment, but he collects himself and blinks a few times. Uh, it's it's less of a, a plan and more of an idea. Uh, you see, the last time that uh, we traversed the elemental plane of fire, uh, you know, for an extended period at least, uh, I came across a clutch of young dragons there, uh, an eminently wonderful and terrifying bunch that I perhaps might be able to call in a favor for, depend upon how much time has passed. Uh, then again, dragons live a hell of a lot longer than, Wait, well, most dragons? people. dragons? You say dragons? Hey. I mean, you just yeah. got eminently more interesting. Are we going to go meet dragons on the elemental plane of fire? Uh, it's a possibility. It's just a, a, an idea that I had. Look, I don't even know if Zarakel is still alive. Um, do I... I would greatly prefer this alternative to having 
any type of prolonged conversation with Callum, especially if it's one that puts us in his debt. Who would I? Nowhere. Can you imagine the 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 looks you would get dealing at the behest of someone like that? It's not a not a good outlook for you. Just saying. I, as Mercy says this, my face just like crinkles, like I've smelt something really, really bad. This thought haunts me. And it upsets me that someone has noticed it because I don't want to have anything to do with Callum. Oh, I noticed. <laughs> um, more importantly, uh, this is more me asking because I haven't been here very long. Do we often get um, passengers joining us from the elemental plane of fire? Uh, it's, it's a common occurrence. So uh, wherever the rights go, obviously somebody's going to be interested in hopping aboard. Whether or not those entities are um, thinking or uh, simply interested in our wares is a completely different story. Sure, 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 sure. I understand. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Jovi this time has been sort of glancing through her bag and as she begins to put together something that seems to um, be some sort of more elaborate drink, she takes a look at the bottle of cognac in her hand and just goes, fuck it, and just pours two shots of cognac and hands one to um, um, Amen. Clink. <laughs> you see him down the shot really uh, greedily, and it, it... He seems to have it go down smooth, but then immediately his shoulders bunch up and he kind of <clears throat> catches a bit of breath in his throat. <clears> that... <throat> uh, uh. You know, it's a marvelous thing when you don't drink water for five hours. <laughs> you hear him kind of cough. Did you need some? I have some. Uh, quite lovely glacial, uh, perfect temperature. He nods. She'll, uh, she'll go into her, uh, her mixologist kit and find some chilled water that she has. Because she can hold that. <laughs> <laughs> obviously just uh, like takes the like fills the shot glass with water so it just it's sort of like it's like homeopathic amount of cognac still in the uh, still in the glass yeah uh, obviously <laughs> uh with the cognac he kind of uh, tries to settle down a little bit look uh, sarah kill is a, a nice uh, nice uh, man, dragon. He's a good person. M thing. Monster. Uh, dragon. Zarakel's a friend of mine. I'm pretty sure that he's okay with dealing with someone of our disposition. And, and it's not like the dragons have a stake in a blood war, so it wouldn't be seen as helping either side. He's helping an institution. I'm I'm eminently sure that he would be uh, uh, willing to help uh, either secure or provide a, a crystal of substantial enough uh, heft and importance. He kind of blinks a couple of times. Well, perhaps since we do have the time, you can attempt to strike some sort of bargain with your friend. And if it doesn't work, as we will have Callum staying on board, for some time. We can always come to him last, and certainly least. Uh, Works for me. Uh, yes. uh, 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 about, 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 about the whole actually going and talking to Zar uh, Zarakel. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, 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 Let me guess, you're not fireproof. Well, that, but I can solve that with a couple of uh, designs that I've got in my head. Uh, the more pressing matter is uh, uh, Bailey, my, my wife. She's she's pregnant. I, I, uh, not that I'm uh, eminently uh, at the service of the rights, but uh, I, the the whole death sort of thing doesn't exactly take with my sensibilities, especially not with Bailey. You're you're Bailey's Amen. Oh, okay. I now I know what's going on. I mean, they have the same surname, so, you know, kind of, fairly. Even I got that. I'll make yeah. it a point to be on a first-name basis with everyone, dear. 
While I personally believe that losing one's parents can be a great way to build up a core inner strength that just is lacking in so many people, I completely understand your hesitancy. I am sure we can find someone who can make the trade for you. Jovi just is flabbergasted at heaven, or not at heavenly, well, yeah, at heavenly as well, <laughs> as nowhere right now. Uh, as if, did you just say being an orphan builds character? Yes. Does it not? Well. Uh, oh, I certainly have a better adjustment on you, or uh, ascertaining I just shake my head, dear. Uh, you had a fun childhood, didn't you, Nowhere? Yes, my parents were very loving, and then I left the house with the first strange human who offered something that sounded interesting. Then maybe Don't shut up when all. it comes to orphans. Was it candy, honey? Oh, Mercy, it seems that I've offended you. I'm very sorry. This was not my intention. Let's change the subject from all of this boorish talk of orphans and character. Well, that's okay. I understand that maybe talking with people isn't your best character trait, and that's okay. Everyone has a weakness. You see Eamon actually actively hiding behind a little bit of a blast shield that he has constructed for himself rather hastily. <laughs> Just Pre slowly putting pieces together. Yeah, like... Uh, Eating grin. Yes, well, it is exhausting being tiringly perfect all of the time, so I appreciate your understanding on this, Mercy. As one who is so rift with flaws and imperfections, I'm sure this is very easy for you to understand slip-ups of these kinds. You're welcome. Should we go find a dragon? Uh, you know, I wasn't... Fine. I wasn't interested. Oh, fine. Until Sorry, I didn't want to fight the dragon. Ago. I mean, we could fight the dragon. Do we need to fight the dragon? No, please. No, thank you. I thought we were friends with the <laughs> dragon, and it was going to be a very easy trade. I mean, the dragon might want a show of strength to prove we are worthy of taking said crystal. You don't know. You, you're, you're gonna eat those words when you meet Zarakel. I swear. He kind of blinks a couple of times. Eamon, your help is absolutely appreciated. He kind of peeks up from behind the blast shield. <laughs> Look, um, that's the three sort of basic solutions that I got at the minute. If we don't want to solve this immediately, then there's nothing further I can do. I mean, not that I'm uninterested in what exactly is lying out there, but... That's all I got. I'm sorry. He kind of <clears throat> like shrinks behind the blast shield a little bit. Well, Mercy, it sounds it. like this would be your first time traveling to another plane of existence. I find that would be a worthy diversion from our typical chores aboard the final rites. If you are to be mm -hmm. here for any length of time, you have to know what sort of things await us off these ships. Oh, nowhere, darling. I simply can't wait to try visiting another plane of existence. Jovi slowly pours another drink. <laughs> you see another blast shield actually come up, uh, uh, actually deployed from, like, a small canister that Eamon has set. Eamon picks up and he has a helmet on now. <laughs> it's settled, then. We will all take a diversion to the elemental plane of fire to meet this friend of yours, Eamon, who will be willing to bargain with us, you're sure. You see, like, thick black, uh, <laughs> like, scientist's goggles <laughs> obscure his eyes, and he just sort of nods. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, no, uh, most definitely, um, just, just, uh, he's a sensitive soul. Just, just go easy on him, and I'm sure that you'll be able to sort of, you know, figure out the, the exact terms and conditions. Of... Just... I'm sure we will. Just don't hurt we'll him. We'll be fine. Nowhere is great with terms and conditions. It's true. I already have a contract that I've written up for this exact situation. Need crystal from dragon contract. 
<laughs> the back of my uh, journal is just like a, what are those called? The xylophone folders. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The accordion, the accordion, of the xylophone. Well, what is xylophone? <laughs> xylophone. Isn't a xylophone like a keyboard that you hit with a stick? <laughs> xylophone yes, folders are, are the organizational structure that Eamon has implemented in his room. It's just all the files in a big row. <laughs> yeah, but, well, what it is is that he's got like filing cabinets. They're, they don't actually open. What he does is take a wand and hits it and it, it reverberates the information mm -hmm. out. It's exactly what a xylophone. By the way, when you search xylophone folder, it corrects to accordion. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not the only person to mix up those two instruments <laughs> and what type of folder might be named after. <laughs> Want a xylophone folder now? Damn it! <laughs> All right. All right. So, Amon, having made for himself a little bit of a fort. Um, kind of looks up over at, at you nowhere quickly. So, we're not immediately concerned with the situation? Or at least... Oh, well, I'm ready to go whenever. I mean, yeah, I'm concerned. We have to, I we got have to be thrown here out of fuck knows where. <laughs> no, Eamon, to answer your question, we are not immediately concerned with this situation, and... Because we are not, this will be our little secret, won't it? Well, I'm going to have to talk to your holla again just to make sure that I got a couple of extra, uh, shall we say, non-magical lackeys to help clear up the festering. In non-magical individuals, the, the, the substance is completely inert. For some, it might be a problem. I would not show it to you even if you held a sword to my throat. Believe me, he blinks a couple of times. Good to know. Thank you. Do we have any non-magical people aboard the ship? There are... F Actually, go ahead and make a... That's a nat 20! Hey, hey! Fantastic. There are indeed a few um, non-magical uh, persons aboard the ship. Um, Bahazet, uh, Eamon, uh, and a few others, uh, especially amongst the uh, command and the uh, and the keepers. They probably wouldn't fall under that category, but there are a few like lower-level fighters and whatnot, humans, tieflings, and and other sort of. Uh, persons conscripted into service uh, aboard the rights who absolutely uh, have no magical capabilities uh, um, among their skills. So we need to take one of those with us. Um, it's only for the clearing of the festering that he's concerned. Um, so, excuse me, uh, in finding the motivating crystal and handling it, you get the sense that Eamon has means to do that. But um, in terms of the festering, the, the sort of crystal that is growing on the crystal, um, it's something that needs to be handled by those who have no magical talent or attunement to Arcana. Okay. Well, we won't be in the elemental plane of fire until tomorrow when we dock. So perhaps yep. this would be as good a time as any to break for the day and reconvene tomorrow. Uh, yeah, sure. All yeah, right. uh, that's probably the shortest work day I've ever had. Fuck yeah. Uh, no, I don't mean you have to go back to whatever tasks you n normally do. Fine. <laughs> a Eamon kind of looks again from uh, his fortifications and blinks a few times actually I suppose I ain't asked um, Mercy you're magical ain't you um that really depends on what um, 
magic you're going for. I can't shoot fireballs or icicles. Um, I can't raise dead people. Um, I can't do anything I guess you consider arcane. I am kind of supernaturally good at dodging stuff, I guess, but I'm pretty sure that's more from uh, training I received before I came aboard the rights. I can't do any kind of spell mumbo jumbo, if that's what you mean. He kind of blinks a couple of times, weighs the options. All right, we'll go ahead. Do you want me to show you something I can do? Do you want me to no, try no, and show no, no, you no, something? No. I can show you. No, 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 no. no but no we need to make sure it's not magic. No, nope, perfectly fine. I I can summarize by myself. And besides, Bailey would kill me if it, if anything happened to you. Oh, it wouldn't hurt you, really. No, 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 no. It's not. It's it's not. Well, it is my corporeal safety that I'm concerned with in this matter. But it, is there anything else y'all need? He kind of massages his forehead. I think uh, I think we're good till we. I guess tomorrow. Sure, I guess I'll go back to patrol in the drinking hall as usual. Jody, wanna walk together? Sure. Uh, Eamon, come by sometime. Free drink on the house for your help. Thank you. He he just nods and, and just kind of takes down the blast shields that he had assembled <clears throat> kind of rolling his shoulders and cracking his neck uh, looking over to nowhere expectantly yes we will chat again tomorrow I don't unless there's something you need me for not at the moment but if, uh, if anything happens and I need to Get something figured out, I'll let you know. I'll try and get a hold of Zarkel um, once we get onto the plane itself. I think there's been enough interplanar fuckery going around the rights for the present moment. Agreed. Wonderful. He kind of... <sighs> you see him kind of let his... Uh, mind take a little bit of a rest uh, there's a vacant sort of expression that clings to him for a moment before he kind of snaps back and breathes I I'm uh, I'm gonna just head off and uh, uh, see if uh, see if Bailey's got what I need forged. Uh, it was a temporary housing unit for whatever we found and, and, and whatnot. It's, it's just... <clears throat> he kind of breathes heavily. We'll see you around then, Amy. Thank you. Yeah, catch up soon. Jovi will hook an arm into Mercy's and pull her out the door. <laughs> Woo! Eamon follows suit and uh, nowhere, I assume you also uh, kind of mosey on out lurk out always be lurking i lurk oh yes you lurk from Eamon turns around and she's yeah. gone <laughs> all right and so the three of you adjourn your quest or the next step in your quest uh so the just to ensure that i'm interpreting this correctly the current quest thing is to forego uh, venturing onto the current plane that you are on um, to see what uh, Eamon had hypothesized as sort of a um, a uh, potential uh, replacement for the motivating crystal and to wait until the transition into the elemental plane of fire which is going to happen tonight yes hooray because we have two potential options if we wait for that and uh, one trek into a potentially dangerous place might be enough for, for me <laughs> yeah I don't think that I'm gonna be doing any mountain trekking so I want to meet a dragon 
Well, Absolutely. Mercy, Mercy is very keen to go to the elemental plane of fire. Really? I hadn't noticed. Couldn't tell. So, as the uh, time goes by and progresses into the sort of noon to afternoon, uh, you note that the patrons aboard the rights are really none the wiser to the current situation. You note that a few uh, demonic individuals have been a little bit more rowdy than perhaps is allowable, um, you know, uh, pushing and shoving and, and whatnot. Uh, Mercy, your uh, portion of the crew is keeping on top of that situation uh, as best they can. Um, but... Pardon. Uh, as you return from the lower levels of the final rites and onto the main deck, is there anything in specific that any of you would like to sort of address or otherwise investigate as the rites is now properly open? Marcy would like to get a drink. That I can ac um, I can accommodate. She assumes she's allowed to drink on duty. That's totally okay. <laughs> when you get conscripted against your will. Exactly. You get to drink a little. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, is there anything par in particular that nowhere would uh, wish to get done? <laughs> um, the tabaxi that yeah, ran onto her She's desk, yelling probably. at me. Um, I don't think so. I'll go to the crew quarters, the grub, the mess, the grubuary. Sure, yeah. the, the, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the bastardized common translation of it, but yes, it, the mess hall. You, you, There is indeed uh, such a place if you're requiring sustenance. Yeah, I need a snack. Of course, and indeed, as you uh, go to the mess hall, um, in scheming with, or excuse me, in coordinating with Eamon and uh, getting things in order, um, it's progressed into around that noontime, uh, well, at, at least it's a close approximation to noon. Um, the crew cafeteria or mess hall is separate from uh, that of the guests, obviously, because of a myriad of uh, things. But um, the cook aboard the final rites, the galley cook, uh, Succulent, is more than uh, able to sort of uh, serve and otherwise um, ensure that everyone is taken care of. His staff, uh, almost in militaristic fashion, is able to uh, provide hot and ready meals for the... Uh, guards and other um, proper staff members of uh, the final rites. Those under Bahazet's command most frequent this particular mess hall, but as you approach, Succulent himself kind of uh, looks up and getting a good uh, look at the uh, tiefling himself, it, it kind of... It's strange seeing someone so old aboard the rites. Uh, he's got a, ma a mangy mane of gray hair, uh, sort of interspersed with uh, moss or sort of greenery, uh, as well as uh, horns that seem to just sort of uh, hang from his temples in sort of a, a, a bull's fashion. Um, a shockingly silver beard, uh, well-kept in stark contrast to his hair uh, clings to his cheeks and goes to about his mid neck uh, in terms of length and uh, as he looks up um, you see his eyes almost disturbingly baby blue uh, lock onto you uh, and he smiles quite broadly as you see the uh, excuse me as you see the yellowish uh, kind of skin that uh, he uh, has 
it's similar in hue to Mercy's, but weathered with age and time. And as you approach, he kind of uh, waves you over and, and smiles very broadly. Um, I imagine there's something that I like always eat, like a salad with no dressing, just uh, leaves. Oh. A monster. <laughs> A dry salad with sunflower seeds and But you only raisins. use iceberg lettuce. <laughs> only iceberg lettuce. <laughs> and it's just like dry chewing iceberg water. Lettuce salad with raisins, with craisins and sunflower seeds. Oh no. Yes. That's as adventurous as she gets <laughs> with some craisins. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's the line. All right. Um uh, succulent knows you very well, and uh, indeed, you see him kind of like <laughs> shake his head. I swear, there's no one with a drier palate than you aboard this damn ship. <laughs> he kind of laughs to himself as he grabs a large cleaver and begins to hack away at a head of iceberg lettuce. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Little bit of a time I hear y'all are having. <laughs> and what do you mean by that? Oh, come on, people talk and talk and talk and talk around here. <laughs> Don't worry, secret safe with me. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't a damn thing wrong with this ship. As long as my kitchen's in order. Well, you know what they say, succulent. Gossip is the devil's telephone, and it's best to just hang up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But where's a and what's a telephone? He kind of like <laughs> kind of narrows his eyes and like tries to think of an association, but don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm sure. Sprinkles of craisins and sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm slams the bowl in front of you uh, shipping it across this sort of counter space. You notice like a <laughs> sorry, a couple of the crew uh, that you're not eminently or immediately familiar with kind of look to you in somewhat confusion and horror as you see that they're eating like very uh, richly made like um, what seems to be some sort of like borscht or gruel uh, that they're kind of aghast at the fact that you're just eating this very undressed, very simple salad. I have finer taste in things, but food is not one of them. Aw, buddy. She says that she can't walk in the dress she's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot. Hey. you. Yeah, what what exactly does your dress look like as as you walk amidst this like grubby com like camaraderie of like <laughs> roughly uniformed like guards and lower level servicemen and uh, service well, people? I haven't had a chance to change from um, typically. I like to do don't bite don't bite me. She just walked over here and she just bit my knee. It's like hey, pay attention. Um. Now she's licking my knee. Okay, I forgive you. Um, I usually like to do like three costume changes in a day, mm -hmm. but I wasn't able to between when we first went to the Grubriary and then we went to go see Eamon. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it from now on. Um, so I'm just wearing what I was wearing when I first woke up, which is the like high stiff collar, like like neck and chest armor for some reason that yeah, has like, yeah. very elaborate, like pointy shoulders. And then, uh, like a greenish kind of wrap over my my chest, totally bare stomach, and then like a skirt that matches. That's like a wrap skirt. And heels. Let's not forget the and heels. heels. <laughs> Succulent kind of blinks a couple of times. Well, uh, I suppose then there's nothing more that you're gonna need, gonna need. No, not at this time, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Salad, does she even drink water? Oh, she's 
I'm very hydrated. How dare you? <laughs> I get it all from my iceberg lettuce. <laughs> oh my god. This is, like the gross, this is like this is where that visceral and uncomfortable part of our show comes in. Yeah, and like I only eat I only eat iceberg lettuce, celery, and cucumbers, things that I can both eat and get my daily water intake at the same time. I'm very efficient. And like, amidst the guards who don't particularly like strike an imposing figure, uh, these are like battle hardened, like you've got scars, people missing like portions of their cheek or like a few teeth. And as soon as you walk in and order this undressed salad, you notice like a lot of them are, are terrified almost, or at least aghast at your choice of food. You you actually hear one of them, what, like one of them whisper under the breath, what the fuck? Before being like batted away by a couple of his friends. You'll end up on our list, shut up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. I just, I just want to eat my salad. Okay, you are unharassed and looked on in kind of Start confusion for but a moment before they avert their eyes and go back to what they were doing. Wow. <laughs> As this occurs, Jovi, Mercy, I assume that you have uh, returned to Hamish's uh, establishment? To the bar. Yes. Um, Jovi's just mixing random stuff together because Mercy's always down for that. Um, trying to sort of just keep her mind on that. Um, but if she... If Hamish shows up at all during the afternoon, she will... Um, she will go talk to Hamish. Sort you, of this air of casualness, but, but wanting to go talk to Hamish. You actually see him uh, as you uh, approach the bar and... and set about uh, working on Mercy's latest brew. He is currently attending uh, a couple of, um, shall we say, particularly sauced individuals. Uh, one of them seems to be a human and, uh, and a little bit more of hardier stock than the very soft, uh, round-faced... Uh, dwarven woman, um, you know, beard sort of braided quite finely, uh, who's just kind of like forehead to to counter, like praying that whatever Hamish is, uh, is serving will cure whatever ails her. Um, and she'll sort of sidle up to, to Hamish as he's working, just kind of quietly uh, um, speaking to him. He is in the process of uh, mashing a couple of mint leaves into what seems to be a paste or something, uh, along with some ginger root and, and some other sort of curative uh, elements. Uh, as you approach, he flicks his middle finger and a sh uh, what seems to be like a blue mist is dispersed above the mixture, and he um, continues mashing. Oh, that's a fun little trick. You haven't taught me that one yet. Eh, you'll learn in time. I'm sure you will. <laughs> uh, so, um, what what would you be doing this evening? Are you busy? We are always busy in the evening. He kind of blinks a couple after, of times. After hours, I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> so forward, Jovi. He kind of chuckles to himself. And if I were preoccupied this evening, what would I be missing? The pleasure of my company, dear. Um, <laughs> she looks actively like she's trying to be casual, but she's looking kind of like... Um, she looks anxious. Like she really just wants him to say yes. <laughs> you... you uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check just for me real quick. That'd be a 12. As you sort of look to him in this very pleading manner, he tilts his head and 
pours a clear uh, liquid into the uh, cup itself along with some water and with a mage hand uh, assembles the shaker uh, quite uh, effortlessly uh, shakes it in the background as a away from the sort of uh, ailing patrons who kind of like cover their ears from the clatter of the glass or uh, the clatter of the the <laughs> yeah the glass and the ice and he shakes him away and as it's floating away he kind of crosses his arms and looks to you in a kind of concerned manner in misinterpreting your anxiety you're right there lass well you know um uh that whole fuss with the uh, uh folks bouncing in and out of ship when they're not supposed to uh, it doesn't seem like we're getting that resolved and um, I just would prefer to um, be around a friendly face tonight instead of someone I, I haven't vetted yet he blinks a couple of times and tries to understand he's gonna roll a bit of an insight check Go ahead and just, uh, hmm. I don't know exactly what this would be. All right, come up with a DC in your head and just, uh, Nat 20. Well, I don't I really can show you the dice if you want DC, me to. Then it wasn't very, yeah. Yeah. She is not very so, good at it. Yeah. yeah. As he kind of looks to you, where exactly is that anxiety sort of welling up from? Like, what what is Jovi really trying to? Jovi is very unsettled by the idea that the place she considers her home is not secure right now. She doesn't like the idea that anybody could just waltz in or out and that's usually that security that feeling of you know oh well you know nobody can just snatch you <laughs> uh is what kind of keeps her comfortable talking to people on the boat is she feels secure and she does not feel like she is safe right now as he kind of scans your face you see the shaker kind of drop in the middle of the air as the mage hand disperses before quickly being caught before it lands on the ground. A few cursory shakes are then given uh, and then a strainer is produced by Hamish who effortlessly pours it into two shot glasses which sort of swirl with a green brown tinted liquid uh, but a blue mist that emanates from them. He pushes it over to um, the two patrons who kind of like half register that a drink is in front of them and they just sort of down it. Uh, gold is exchanged very quickly, but Hamish doesn't really um, pay attention to it. She she sort of uh, does a sort of casual smile at the uh, flickering smile at the, the patrons. They don't notice. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's habit at that uh, point. It's just like, put on a nice face yeah. whenever you're dealing with a, cost, a customer. Yeah. Luckily, the, the, the density of the crowd is not exactly... Uh, not exactly uh, peak. So he kind of feels comfortable with, like, putting a hand on your shoulder and... Pursing it for a moment... promise you, no matter where we end up. He, he kind of deflates and drops the accent. You're going to be safe. All right. I promise you that. She just nods very quietly. <sighs> he takes off his spectacles. Obviously, no lenses, just for appearances. <laughs> Pinches the bridge of his nose. So, how bad is it, really? What, the 
crippling anxiety? Uh, the situation that I suppose caused that crippling anxiety. Um, well, I... She hasn't talked to him about this, so it takes her a minute to kind of feel like she can tell him. Um, I don't know, honestly. I've just been sort of avoiding, and um, I don't really know what I'm worried about or if I even should be worried, and part of that is what I worry about, if that makes any sense. No, but I think I can probably divine something. Uh, hey, Marcy! He immediately puts back on the accent. Yeah, sorry, what? Hey, well, uh, what exactly happened? I, I've been talking to Jovi for a little bit and a little bit. What, like down there, you mean? Or. Hey, down there. Um. Well, you know, we're just, you know, investigating a few things, this and that. Unfortunately, nowhere swore us to secrecy, so we can't really tell you, even though I would love to. I honestly would, you know, nowhere just doesn't like when we talk to people and have actual social lives. So I've been strictly forbidden from telling you anything at all. Make a perception check. <laughs> That is 12. No, wait, okay. 13. Okay, hang on for a moment. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll a little bit of a check here. Hiya. And that was uh, 13. Uh, 12. Uh, 13. 13, okay. You see quite clearly as you're saying, obviously you can't share anything, uh, Hamish has reached under the bar and is beginning to assemble the sort of uh, novelty cocktail uh, recipe that Jovi came up for you. Uh, what was the name of that uh, cocktail once more? Mercy's something? Hold on. Mercy me? Mercy that's me. Real, that's a real high, high ABV. <laughs> yeah. Real high ABV. And... Uh, as Hamish is assembling it, he slides the glass over to you. You want to obviously keep uh, secrets, I understand. But, Naturally. But I'm sure that's for enemies. And you wouldn't call me an enemy, would you? Well, I'd like not to, but you know, in times like these, can you really trust anyone? Half price. I work here. I should get it as part of my... I don't even get paid. Yeah, we at least get a staff drink. Yeah. I mean, that's this, is just... a, this is a specialty drink. You don't get staff drinks. Make a persuasion <laughs> check. She better hurry up. It's gonna... Um, well, that's an 18. Soon. It's got such a high alcohol. Cool. I just okay. gave him the best puppy eyes. Like... Caught our price in one free week. I suppose I can accept that. <laughs> I And I suppose that Mercy, after uh, imbibing this lovely, lovely concoction, uh, finds herself more than willing to maybe share a bit. Of so... Kind of trying to find out why I fell through the roof that one time. Now, you know, it's kind of not thing that usually happens around here. Um, and yeah, it's, I guess, a bit of a weird one. I don't think that's meant to happen. Something about not apparating or disapparating within the grounds. Did I read that somewhere? I can't remember. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, there's some weird mumbo jumbo going on, and we're clearly the best tieflings for the job. I mean, have you seen us? Uh, I have, and I'm sure that that assessment is accurate. The second drink uh, slides in front of you. Oh, thank you. It's been a long day, and it's barely even noon yet. 
he nods. <laughs> As you imbibe this second drink, I assume... Oh, uh, go ahead. So she's just staring into her glass in intensely. <laughs> um, Hamish kind of presses the issue. So what exactly is transpiring? Wow. People come and go when they shouldn't, I think. I mean, I'm one of them and I didn't even mean to come here, so fuck that, right? Uh, well, wait a minute, weren't you on the list? Well, yeah, but I never signed anything. I didn't even know this place existed before I fell through the fucking ceiling. Uh, like, I saw this guy, this creepy white tiefling with, like, six horns, and next thing I know, I'm signed up to involuntary servitude aboard a hell ship on the River Styx. And I'm stuck here, and I can't get back to Waterdeep. I can't even, like, contact anyone I knew from before, and that sucks. What kind of a fucking job is it? I, you guys, you should really have a union. Are you sure you don't have a union? Uh, that might be a question for someone who's actually employed by the rights, but I'm sure that there's some kind of conversation that can go ahead there. Uh, stay on topic. He sort of, like, uh, waves a hand in front of you. You see, like, eight fingers pass your, <laughs> pass your immediate vision. Yeah, sure, sorry. Um, what was the topic again? What's happening? Um, so people are coming and going, uh, without the say-so of the rights, I think. And, of course, the big wigs at the top ain't happy with that, because it means their magic's got some holes in it, which is, frankly, quite embarrassing, really. I don't think they want anyone else to know, and I kind of just start giggling. You, you kind of hear a moaning from, uh, the human patron, who's kind of like, uh, could... Be softer, please. Kind of nursing. And you headache. know, if anyone did find out, like if anyone overheard that this was a thing, I think they'd probably get executed or thrown off the ship or something. Can you imagine? Go ahead and make uh, uh, a, I'd say, an intimidation check. That is what's known as a three. Ah, a three, you say? One of those three. threes. Ah, yeah, one of one of those threes that I keep hearing. Uh, Very familiar. As the medicinal sort of qualities work through their system, the two patrons kind of like just keep to themselves and like trying to ignore this very loud explanation that's battering their left eardrum as mercy continues as mercy's speaking she's also like totally lazily swinging the hammer as well just like absent-mindedly <laughs> <I swear. laughs> hamish is unperturbed by all of this all right fine Glad to see that you're in a jolly mood, given the circumstances. So what's been done? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. We're going to get to go to the elemental plane of fire. How cool is that? I might even see my friend there. We're going to go see a dragon. How cool. Jovi, I think that this is your cue. And he turns over to the other patrons who are kind of like... Uh, they seem a little bit better, but they obviously need some sort of conversation. Uh, Jovi will slide in and just lean at Mercy and, uh, like, eyeing Hamish, like, what the fuck do you think I'm gonna do? <laughs> and he, he shrugs and, um, s turns his back to you before stopping a little bit, and you see his eyes meet yours, and a soft flash kind of emanates from them. You receive a message. I'll be there tonight. Just 
just short, simple, and to the point. Before going back to the patrons. Uh, it takes our minute to sort of collect and uh, turn back to Mercy uh, and puts on a very congenial smile. So, down for any more experimenting, baby doll? Huh? Um, I mean, sure, it depends. Make it sweet, though. I feel like I need something with a bit more sugar. I'm feeling a bit kind of tired. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> to, to vomit on Jovi. <laughs> That's a ten. It it gurgles and pops in your uh, in your throat, but you're able to keep it down, and you're able to kind of continue experimenting if you so desire. She does for a bit. It's a slow night. She starts. Jovi starts lowering the volume and the alcohol content of the drinks she's serving Mercy and and keeps sort of like encouraging her to go like take a walk or like walk around a little bit, you know, just get get your faculties back. You gotta, you know, it's it's an it's a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, Mercy and, does go for a walk, but part way around she gets distracted by like the music that's playing and completely hundred percent joins in and whips out her chamisen. <laughs> make a performance check for me real quick this has been about like a couple of hours have passed at this point yeah. <laughs> that's actually a 22 it's a brilliant performance inspired yeah. yes brilliant arrangement your shamisen adds actually uh, a, a good sort of counterbalance to the, the more hard and heavy uh music of the Dwarven establishment, actually. It's very heavy percussion and bass. It needed that sort of lightness and airiness. And, and as you sort of join in your uh, drunken state, uh, it intermingles quite perfectly, uh, much to the amusement of the trio who, who kind of raise uh, a glass of hard liquor in your honor and just down it, their seventh drink of the day. <laughs> Any drunken hour, master for nothing. <laughs> yes. Before we adjourn, however, nowhere. Your second costume change is nigh. What exactly do we see nowhere change into as the evening approaches? Um, well, the costume that I want is what I want her to be in for her journey for tomorrow. So I think I'm just trying not to make sure it fits perfectly. In, t in case I need to make any, any last minute last adjustments. Minute, yeah, last minute tailoring. Exactly. So it is, uh, it's cream colored and it goes, you know, it's from here to the floor. So it's full body. And it appears to be one sleeve with kind of um, like a drape. But when she lifts up this arm, it's connected to the skirt. So oh it's like God. a one, arm, it's like a one arm toga. And then she's wearing a cape that's made of chain mail. Mm. Hmm. That is like delicately, delicately chained here. And then when you turn, it's a little, she's wearing a little half cape. It's made out of chain mail. Oh my God. What Met Gala bullshit is this? <laughs> Uh, Nowhere is a walking Met Gala. Yeah, I'm so kidding. I'm just, you see me just standing in the mirror and I'm just like raising my arm to make sure that when I raise my arm, the fabric is draping properly. Because when I raise my arm, I want it, the fabric to be taut, and, but I don't want it to pull up on my ankle. So, and, and then make sure that when my arm is folded, that the fabric isn't bunching in a weird place and that my silhouette looks nice. And then of course there's a hole for my tail. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. Um, I... You got, got to make sure that fabric is strong enough that when the dragon grabs you by that hoop that you've created, it won't tear. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's definitely dragon proof. Exactly. <laughs> uh, actually, make a quick intelligence check. Oh, God. That's a nat 20. <laughs> As you're sort of uh, trying on the gown and everything, you then realize, oh, wait, 
You need to make the fabric flame retardant. So, uh... I have a spray for that. Yeah, there, there's probably, like, some sort of paste that that somebody come up, can it's come scented. up scented. Yeah, and there are, like, a couple of alchemists that are, are uh, consigned to the uh, concierge. Or to my outfits. coordinate with the concierge crew. Like, Nowhere's like, yeah, outfit are... alchemist. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The, actually, what's the guy's or what's the person's name? Individual. Their name is uh, Gork. Gork. Ah, Gork. Yes, the the orcish uh, artificer nope, slash alchemist. It, Gork the orc. Really, Jason? Gork. Look. Yes, yes, Gork the Orc. Yes, all right, sorry, yes, and. He sorry. went to school, he went to school to be a fashion designer and um, found that alchemy was a very lucrative field. So he was an alchemist in his, like, much like some people pay for graduate school by being like bartenders. Um, he played for fashion, he paid for fashion school by being an alchemist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a very lucrative profession in both regards, especially now that he's got such a consistent client. So you can probably mosey on down to Gork's shop at some point. Please, please tell me it's spelled G apostrophe O R C. <laughs> of course it is. Very, it's very Milan Fashion Week. <laughs> yeah, it's Try it's very famous. like very hot couture sort of sort of interpretation. Yes. Yeah, I'll go. Yes, I'll see. Absolutely. I'll go and see Gork before I retire for the evening, so he can make needed adjustments and make it flame retarded. <laughs> A absolutely. Um, because I can't even conceptualize how to <laughs> how to voice Gork. 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 God damn it! As you uh, open the door to your um, core. I would like you to make a perception. Well, who is waiting for me? No one, it's a trap. No Yikes, one no I'm glad I got a natural 20 on my fashion check, but I got a six on my perception check. What really matters, you know? What, yeah, exactly. It's It's got to be happens you don't notice the figure that sort of skulks in the shadows behind you but you do for whatever reason note the strange smell of sulfur that permeates the air oh no it's the captain <laughs> yeah it kind of grabs your nose a little bit and, and like you feel it singe your nose hairs but you pay no especially And you don't notice the Always be skulking. Always be skulking. He wrote the book. <laughs> All right. So what do you wish to do, Nowhere? I mean, if I don't notice that he's there, there, then I'm just gonna go sit at my desk and write oh. the day's happenings. Oh, uh, uh, I thought you were adjourning to go to Gork. Oh, this is this is before. I thought this was when I come back. Yeah, I'm gonna go see Gork, obviously. Gork the Orc. Yeah. Gork, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, so as you um, uh, continue to press uh, onward, you note the smell of sulfur kind of so sorry i had to had to breathe for a moment because of what was just mentioned in um in chat um what was mentioned in chat I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in twitch oh, tell name, me someone tell his me his name is clearly gork de orc like d yeah. apostrophe yeah. gork de orc gork, gork de orc it just looks like dior but orc <laughs> yes <laughs> If you look very closely, all of my outfits have his insignia embroidered somewhere on Well, now them. you have to explain the insignia real quick. 
Just real quick, as oh, as it. the captain looms behind you. It's a it's a it's an O, and then inside the O is a G, and then yeah, and then going through diagonally is a line, and then just outside the O is a little little. I'll draw. You know, I'll draw it. I'll yeah. draw it. Please draw do. it. We'll, we will put it on our world in. <laughs> Indeed, because we will. This is absolutely going in there. <laughs> Indeed, we <Yeah>. will. <laughs> and as you are preoccupied, uh, as you continue to walk, the smell of sulfur gradually fades, and you pay no attention, uh, especially to it, as you make your way to Gork. However, as you walk from his field of vision, the captain himself kind of grits his teeth, breathes a sigh, and steps into the wall opposite him, fading into shadow and traipsing along unprotected. With that, we'll go ahead and call it a wrap on this session and give you all something to think about as we prepare for the uh, entrance into the elemental plane of fire. Lots to plan for, lots to consider, but as a sort of outside note, we thank you all so much for watching and joining us. We appreciate your time and viewership and uh, yeah. My name is, as always, Jason Catrone. I'm the DM around these parts, uh, at, just, at just Jason, please, on Twitter. If you want to see where I'm at at any particular point in time, check the pinned tweet that I've got. I've got a Monday premiere over on Encounter Roleplay happening next week. Um, a session of Grains of Truth, which is a Witcher campaign, over on Susanna Grace's channel, friend of basically everybody. Uh, and you can find me now over on uh, Sam Webby's uh, Twitch channel, uh, at RPG Webby brilliant after the fire uh campaign that's going on uh, it's a lovely game of thrones thing look it's just awesome just check the pin tweet you'll find it just light and fluffy content <laughs> yeah light and fluffy times but as we adjourn i suppose in the same order as you were introduced or some semblance of it heavenly where can we find you what will you be doing all that good stuff you can find me on Twitter at tis underscore aliens, and I have pinned my schedule so you can figure out where you can find me because it's off different places. Um, but you can find me Mondays on Pro Restarters channel, every other Tuesday here, Wednesday on Scraticus Academy, and Thursday on Scraticus Academy. And then you can also find me on the iTunes or the Spotify or whatever podcast app you listen to because I am the writer and the co-host of Monster Crush, which is another Nerd Smith pro product show program baby show program ba baby. It's a baby. Nerd Smith we baby. have you, okay. we have a it's Nerd Smith baby. baby. <laughs> Something like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, anything further or? Um, anything further? Oh, you know, always be lurking. Always be lurking. Indeed. Indeed. Rachel, go ahead and tell the fine folks where we can find you. Myself, um, as I said, I can be found on Twitter. I'm at Tavania. Um, I can be found lurking as a vampire on Mondays of Intentional, um, and on Tuesdays, with the fabulous Witcher campaign that Jason did mention on the alternate Tuesdays that are not this one. Uh, on Thursdays, starting this week, and I'm kind of low-key terrified about this, I'm going to be DMing the D&D 5e viewer game on Encounter Roleplay. <laughs> um, we, start, awesome. uh, we start at 10pm uh, UK time. I think that's 5pm Eastern Standard Time. Or your equivalent with Daylight Savings. Um, so that's going to be wild and hopefully good. <laughs> Everyone's going to guess my pop culture inspiration in the first episode. And if you don't, then you clearly weren't paying attention during the 90s. And that's basically me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. And to finally round it out, Angela. 
Uh, I am Angela. You can find me at darling underscore gypsum on Twitter. Um, you can also find me all over the place on uh, nerdsmith.org, including tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific uh, for Shenanigans, our, uh, I guess we're calling it industrial fantasy D&D with lots of audience participation options. If you donate to the show, you can cause a lot of chaos for us. Not that we don't cause our own chaos, but you know, you can be a part of it. Um, so you can check that out at seven tonight. All right, right. here on We yes. Are Nerds, that's Twitch channel. Right here, right now. No, not right now. Seven, seven p.m. No, <laughs> several hours from now. Several hours from now. <laughs> Follow at We Are Nerdsmith to find out where uh, you know that's going to be happening and how. All right. Well, again, we appreciate everybody who's watching. If you're on YouTube, you can catch us live Tuesdays at two p.m. CST. Uh, that's a whole lot of other time zones, but uh, you'll be glad for it as you can apparently participate in the creation of such things as Gork de Orc, which I'm going to have to figure yep. out something for. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, I just so everybody knows, yep, yep. Uh, since we are a bi-weekly show, our next session will be Tuesday, May 21st. That is our Indeed. next show. Uh, Indeed. So yeah. In the meantime, Alrighty. check us out on Twitter. Final Rights RPG. We'll put stuff out in the mm -hmm. interim. Stuff to enjoy. Exactly, exactly. Oh, yes. And we'll be improving that World Anvil page and all that other stuff. Okay. But for now, we say thank you so much. And we say goodbye. Adios. Bye.